Hi, good morning. Welcome everyone. And good afternoon and good evening to those of you who are tuned in on the live stream from other parts of the world. It's really great to see so many people here today. Thanks for taking the time. We've got a lot of exciting updates to share with you from across both the Android and the Chrome teams. So without further ado, let's get started. I'd like to invite up the man you're here to have breakfast with, SVP of Android Chrome and Apps, Sundar Pichai. Thank you all. I actually had my breakfast at 6.30 in the morning. So I'll just talk. Uh, hopefully, you all have, can have breakfast. Uh, it's been a few weeks since I met a lot of you. Uh, it was at Google I.O. Uh, it's been a busy summer for us since then. The weather has been great, but both the Android and the Chrome teams have been working hard. And so we're very excited to share uh, uh, all the news we have today. Uh, if you recall back to Google I.O., we talked about the fact that we are living in a pivotal moment in computing. Users are increasingly adopting computing devices. Smartphones have exploded in growth. Tablets are following the same trend. The combination of smartphones, tablets, laptops, televisions, it's a multi-screen world for our users. And increasingly, there's a whole new category of emerging devices on the horizon. So it's a very, very exciting time. We at Google are incredibly excited by this trend. We are embracing it. Our goal is to deliver an experience that is seamless, consistent, and beautiful across all these screens. And the way we do that is by investing in two platforms, Android and Chrome. These are two large open platforms, completely designed from the ground up for developers worldwide to innovate on so that they can create great experiences for all these screens. Android is the largest mobile platform in the world, and Chrome is the most popular browser in the world. And they're fully open, designed for innovation on top. Also, between Android and Chrome, we have a solution for all the computing devices that users have in their lives. And our goal is to design an experience that just works for users across these devices. And today, we're going to talk about two things. The first is a device from Android which addresses the, growing, the growth in tablets, the explosion in tablets. The second is a device from Chrome, which really helps unify your experiences across all your screens. So two things we're going to talk about today. First, let's get started with Android. I talked about the growth in tablets. Let's take a look at the data. Uh, the chart says it better than uh, anything else. You can see the rate at which tablets are accelerating. Compare the growth of tablets here to the sales of PCs annually. By 2013, by the end of 2013, consumers are going to buy more tablets every year than personal computers. This is a pretty amazing trend in computing. We from the Android team are investing a lot in tablets. Let's take a look at how Android is doing in tablets. The chart behind me shows the total number of Android tablet activations. At the end of 2012, we were approaching 10 million tablet activations. And you can see how the curve has changed since then. And we are now at over 70 million tablet activations. If you look at the first half of 2013, by our accounts, one in two tablets, almost one in two tablets sold worldwide, is based on Android. Part of what users do on, an, uh, on Android tablets is really spend time on applications and digital content. So we are investing a lot in Google Play because it really completes the user experience on tablets. Just over the last year, Google Play has made tremendous strides. The breadth and depth of content and applications you find on Google Play is amazing. A year ago, users had downloaded 20 billion applications in Google Play. Today, that number is over 50 billion. A year ago, if you look at revenue per user, a metric really important for developers and shows how consumers are engaging with their applications. Revenue per user has increased for developers by 2.5x just in the last 12 months ago, just in the last 12 months alone, and the trend is continuing. A year ago, we had half a million applications in Google Play. Today, 
we are at over 1 million applications. Google Play has the largest collection of digital books, millions of songs, and thousands of TV shows and digital content. So we're very excited about newer developments in Google Play we will talk about, which really completes the tablet experience. Let's put back the tablet growth chart. About a year ago, we launched Nexus 7. You know, we viewed it, it is one of the reasons which really accelerated the momentum behind Android tablets. Nexus is the program by which we work with our partners, with our ecosystem, to push the boundaries of what's possible. And Nexus 7 did that for tablets. We worked very closely with Asus. The CEO of Asus, Johnny Shi, is here. Thank you, Johnny. So we worked very closely with Johnny and his team to deliver the first Nexus 7. It was launched to great reviews, as well as real excitement from users. In fact, since its launch, the Nexus 7 alone, that, that one device alone, has accounted for greater than 10% of Android tablets sold. And it has had great success worldwide. If you take a major market like Japan, the Nexus 7 was the single highest telling, selling tablet in all of Japan during the holiday season. And it accounted for over 45% of all Android tablets sold in Japan. So over the past 12 months, the Android team has been working very closely with Johnny and his team. And today, we are very, very excited to talk about both the new Nexus 7 and all the developments in Google Play so that we can deliver a great tablet experience. So I'm going to invite Hugo Barra up on stage to talk to you about that. Thank you, Thank you Sundar. And uh, good morning, everyone. It's great to be here um, bright and early in San Francisco. Uh, as Sundar said, the Nexus 7 launched uh, a year ago. And it's a great device. And it's been a huge success, really, for three reasons. Uh, first of all, it's an incredibly portable tablet. And it fits perfectly in your hand. Um, second, it's a powerful device at a really affordable price. It's a top-of-the-line tablet that's great for reading books, browsing the web, uh, or playing games. Third, all your information and content are always synced and available to you anywhere. It's the power of Google uh, in your hand. Nexus 7 has been a big hit. And we're going to try to follow up with another one. So today, together with, together with ASUS, uh, we're announcing uh, the new Nexus 7. And um, here it is. Well, um, we're staying focused on exactly the same things that made the original Nexus 7 so successful. Portability, performance, and of course, uh, the power of Google. So first of all, we designed the new Nexus 7 to be even more portable and even more comfortable than the original model. It's super slim. It's almost two millimeters thinner than the original Nexus 7. We kept the same display size. Uh, but reduced the side bezels by almost three millimeters on each side. So the device is now close to six millimeters narrower. It's also 50 grams lighter. And you're going to notice these improvements right away the first time you pick up one of these devices. It actually makes a huge difference when you're holding it with one hand. It's a much more comfortable grip. And of course, it fits easily into your purse uh, or your jacket pocket. Now, in building this device, we really focused on simplifying to core elements. We decided for pure black on black design with the soft touch that everyone loved in the original Nexus 7. We added a few glossy finishes as subtle detail. Um, it looks really amazing, uh, and it just feels great in your hand. Uh, now, um, when you're using a tablet um, to read a magazine, to watch a movie, um, or play a game, uh, or even if you just want to do email, uh, having a crisp and bright display makes all the difference. And that's exactly where the new Nexus 7 really shines. Um, the new Nexus 7 has the same 7-inch display size, but packing in a lot more pixels. We're going from 1280 by 800 in the original Nexus 7 to true 1080p HD at 920, uh, 1920 by 1200 pixels in the new model. That makes the Nexus 7 the world's highest resolution 7-inch tablet. 
We've gone from 216 pixels per inch, which was great in the original Nexus 7, to 323 pixels per inch uh, in the new model. That's the highest PPI of any tablet uh, in the market. Uh, text and images uh, look even sharper than the highest quality print magazine uh, on the new Nexus 7. And of course, you can watch movies and YouTube videos in native 1080p HD resolution, which is completely unprecedented for a 7-inch tablet. Of course, there's more to a great tablet than just the number of pixels. Uh, the new Nexus 7 represents uh, pictures and videos more accurately and more vividly uh, because it can now show 30%, a 30% wider um, range of colors. Um, having a display that allows you to watch movies in 1080p is excellent. But to that, we've added dual stereo speakers so you can finally hear your movie or your game soundtrack in stereo. And we've also worked with Fraunhofer, the people who invented MP3 compression, as some of you might know, um, to integrate their latest virtual surround sound technology into the new Nexus 7. It immerses you in the soundtrack. It's like a 5.1 sound system, but just using the device speakers or any pair of headphones. You'll be able to watch your favorite movies from Google Play in virtual surround sound, and it's awesome. Now, of course, there's no way to show this here on stage, so uh, you'll have to experience it, your, it for yourself um, upstairs in the demo lounge after the event. All right, uh, the new Nexus 7 also features front and rear facing cameras, uh, front facing camera, uh, 1.2 megapixels for video calling and hangouts, and we've also added a five megapixel rear camera for photos and 1080p video. Um, let's talk about performance. Uh, the new Nexus 7 ships with a quad core 1.4 gigahertz Snapdragon S4 Pro chipset. It packs a CPU that's 80% faster and a GPU that delivers four times the graphics frame rate compared to the original Nexus 7. This is, of course, particularly great news for gamers, which we're going to come back to in just a bit. Uh, we've also doubled the system memory to two gigabytes, which means you can have more apps in RAM, and of course, app switching is much faster. You get all the networking options, dual band Wi-Fi, Bluetooth 4.0, and we're shipping a 4G LTE version of the new Nexus 7. It's unlocked, and in the US, you'll be able to get LTE data from AT&T, T-Mobile, or Verizon, all from the same device. It's a single US model. You get HDMI output via Slimport, NFC, and wireless charging, which works as you'd expect with any Qi compatible charger. Um, finally, let's talk about battery. Uh, even with more than twice the number of pixels and almost double the CPU performance, CPU performance, you get one extra hour of power compared to the original Nexus 7, uh, up to nine hours of HD video playback, and up to 10 hours of web browsing and e-reading. So that's the hardware. It's pretty amazing. Um, and now I want to talk about software. The new Nexus 7 is the first device shipping with Android 4.3, which is the newest version of Jelly Bean that we're announcing today. Um, and I'd like to show you a couple of new features in Android 4.3. So first off, uh, tablets are lightweight and portable devices that are perfect for sharing around the house. Um, in Android 4.2, we added multi-user support uh, so that each person, each person sharing the device can have their separate individual space and they can customize their tablet experience. Now, those individual spaces are really handy, but sometimes you want to control what each person can actually do in their space. So in Android 4.3, we're adding, <coughs> excuse me, we're adding, we're taking one step further and we're adding restricted profiles. With restricted profiles, you can control access to content and apps at a user level. So for example, parents can have peace of mind about which family members can access what content and which apps. So what you're looking at here is my Nexus 7, which I share with Jay Jr. over here. Uh, we each have our own separate spaces configured, and I've set up a restricted profile for Jay Jr. on this tablet. Now, I've just, I've just downloaded this app uh, that you're looking at here. Uh, it's called Beauty and the Beast. It's a really cool interactive storybook and puzzle game um, for, for Jay, to play, Jay Jr. to play with. It looks great on the Nexus 7, by the way. Um, why don't we check out the Jigsaw puzzles? 
So each puzzle in here, as you can probably tell, is an in-app purchase. And for now, I'm only giving Jay Jr. the first three to play with. It's probably a good start, and it'll definitely keep him busy. Now, before we give Jay Jr. the tablet, let's switch over to his profile. So this is Jay Jr.'s space, which he has customized. Um, he's got a picture of his sister, and that's actually him, I believe. On his uh, wallpaper, he's put a few app icons on his home screen. It looks cool. Uh, let's take a look at the apps. So these are the apps that I've given Jay Jr. access to in his restricted profile, including um, Star Chart, um, Shake a Phrase, and of course, um, Beauty and the Beast. So let's take a look at that. Uh, Android 4.3 allows an app to behave differently when it's running in a restricted profile. Uh, let me show you that now. Uh, let's check out the jigsaw puzzles again. So uh, Jay Jr. can see the three levels that I got him, but not any of the other levels that I haven't yet um, purchased for him. That's because the app hides all the purchasing functionality and only exposes to a restricted profile content that's already been bought. Uh, these puzzles are really easy for school kids, but impossibly hard for a Googler. Um, pretty typical. We're going to move on. All right. Uh, in addition to parental controls, uh, restricted profiles are super useful for a number of other usage scenarios where you need to limit access in some way. Um, for example, retail kiosks or point of sale systems. All of that, and certainly a lot more, is now possible with Android 4.3. In Android 4.3, we're adding support um, for Bluetooth smart technology, which is also known as Bluetooth low energy. This enables you to pair your Android phone or tablet with low power devices like fitness sensor. In fact, uh, Jay here is wearing a heart rate monitor under his shirt. Uh, it's made by Runtastic, who also make a great fitness app for Android. Um, and here you can see Jay's heart rate live, 136 BPM. Looks like he's feeling not quite as relaxed uh, right now. <laughs> but uh, Jay, why don't you get moving? OK, can't have you collapsing before the end of the demo. 150, 158, wow. OK. Um, so in Android 4.3, we're upgrading our OpenGL support to OpenGL ES 3.0, which is the latest industry standard for accelerated 3D graphics. And in fact, Android is the first platform um, to support this new standard. This is a big deal for game developers in particular, and it really raises the bar for photorealistic 3D graphics. Uh, let me show you two really cool demos. Uh, the first one is a simulation that's made by Japanese developer Silicon Studios. It's a slow motion scene on top of a shiny marble table in the middle of a cathedral. Um, OpenGL ES3 uses 32 bits of data per color for every pixel during the computation process. And that's exactly what creates a new level of photorealism that's really remarkable. You know, for example, you can see incredibly high quality reflection here, not only on the table, but also on the metal rings and the stones. Um, also note, if you go up a little bit, uh, Jay, the stunning bloom lighting effect in the back of the cathedral. Um, it's really great. OK. The next demo is called The Chase, and it's made by Unity. It's a futuristic car chase scene that really shows off the kind of jaw-dropping visuals that are made possible with OpenGL ES3. So we're going to slow down the scene here so you can see all the details. Um, I want you to first pay attention, uh, when you see the character, to the self-shadow effect um, that you're going to see on the character's face. Uh, so what you're seeing here is, complex, is a complex 3D object actually casting a shadow on itself. That's obviously his face, which makes for incredible and unprecedented photorealism um, on a game, for example. Um, OpenGL ES3 uses a new texture compression format that also makes possible to have much more detailed uh, textured surfaces and objects. So I want you to note the detail that you see in the character's faces, for example. You can see the stubble and every amazing part of skin texture and detail. Uh, it's really terrific. Another cool feature of OpenGL ES3 is the ability to render an amorphic lens flare. Uh, these are the J.J. Abrams style horizontal lens flare that you can see here. 
whether you love or hate J.J. Abrams movies, uh, you can also see the reflections that are caused by you know, the, the dirty camera lens, if you will, which is being simulated here by the developer. Um, by the way, everything that you see here is rendered in real time in native 1080p resolution. Uh, OpenGL ES3 really takes advantage of the amazing Nexus 7 high resolution display. Uh, both of these demos will be available in the Play Store. And uh, you're going to see more uh, about OpenGL here today. Okay. Uh, watching movies in 1080p resolution on a tablet is obviously amazing. But actually, most of the premium content that you get on tablets today is in standard definition. And that's usually related to content protection limitations that exist on HD content. So in Android 4.3, um, to help address this, we're introducing a new set of DRM APIs that enable hardware-based encryption and content protection in a standardized way. We're really thrilled to announce today that one of the first Android partners to take advantage of this new capability is Netflix. We've worked with Netflix very closely on a new version of their app uh, that uses uh, Android 4.3 and supports streaming in 1080p HD quality. This new app is available uh, in Play Store since Monday. Nexus 7 is the first tablet to support it and give, give you Netflix 1080p content uh, streaming, uh, and uh, many more devices are coming soon. Uh, there are many more important features and APIs that uh, we're announcing with Android 4.3. Um, you can find a complete list of them uh, on android.com as usual. So Android 4.3 ships on the new Nexus 7. And uh, as I said earlier, and we're also pushing an update starting today to the original Nexus 7, the Nexus 4, the Nexus 10, and Galaxy Nexus. Uh, the Google Play Edition device is the HTC One, and the Galaxy S4 will also receive an Android 4.3 update very soon. So that's a quick overview of Android 4.3. Like I said, uh, the new Nexus 7 is the first device that ships with it. All right, now um, I want to take you on a quick tour of some of the latest Google apps uh, so that you can see how great they look and work on the new Nexus 7. Uh, these apps really take advantage of the super high resolution display in particular, and I'm going to point that out as we go. Uh, let's take a look. So first off, this is Google Drive. Uh, we've added a new tile layout with previewed thumbnails, which looks great uh, on this display. You can even read my shopping list down here on the right without actually opening the document. Uh, we've also just added a new nav drawer uh, with shortcuts to docs that people have shared with me or that I've recently opened, for example. Um, spreadsheets in particular look great on the Nexus 7. You can edit online. Uh, you can view offline since your docs, of course, are automatically synced between your device and Google. Makes Nexus 7 a really great tablet um, for productivity on the go. OK, let's check out the latest version of Chrome. Uh, browsing the web on Chrome on the new Nexus 7 is an amazing experience. With 323 pixels per inch, you can browse any desktop site without ever having to zoom in, because you're looking at print quality text here. Uh, also, um, Chrome now goes into full screen mode, as you just saw here when you scroll down, and that gives you 15% more screen space for your content. Another cool feature that we've just added to Chrome and Android is translation. So if you visit a website uh, in a different language, for example, uh, Folha from Brazil, which is a new site in Portuguese, um, you see this bar on the top right here. You can just tap on Translate, and that takes care of it. In a few seconds, you'll see this translated into English. Um, and of course, any other page that you click on on this side from here will also uh, be translated, just like how it works uh, on Chrome for desktop. All right, let's talk about Google Maps. Uh, we recently launched a, an updated version of um, Google Maps for Android tablets. Uh, the new full screen layout lets you dive into maps, uh, and it looks really stunning at this uh, super high resolution. Uh, one of my favorite new features is called Explore. It's a fast and easy way to browse and discover good places without even having to type. Uh, you can you know, find places to eat, drink, and so on. Uh, when you click on one of these titles, let's say Eat, um, you're going to see top rated places in several different categories. Um, what do you want to check out, Jay? Um, want to try Salomedia? All right. So uh, you've got this awesome new layout, which will show you um, 
you know, ratings, including Zagat ratings, if they're available, uh, snippets, opening hours, uh, and so on. For a lot of the business, you can also click to see inside. You get street view. Uh, it's a really terrific experience, and it looks amazing uh, at uh, 1080p native resolution. Um, so that's Google Maps on Nexus 7. Uh, another Google app that the Nexus 7 is really perfect for is Hangouts. Uh, group video calls on Hangouts are really awesome. And one of my favorite features, which I want to make sure that you see, is screen sharing. So it looks like Jay is joining a call with some of his friends here. I think they're planning a summer trip of some sort. Jay? Yeah. Totally. So everyone's in video right, right so now. Like Why don't we listen in for a second? Agreement here on what we're going to bring. So let's talk about my favorite topic, which is food, and what we're going to eat on this trip. All right, awesome. All right, so here's what I had put together. Obviously, on burgers, mm. corn on the cob. What did I leave off? Yeah, what about uh, here? What about what about lobster burgers? Let's do that. Well, yeah, we're going to Maine, so that makes sense. Okay. That's good. I uh, maybe uh, maybe you can finish that later. I personally would pass on the lobster burgers. Uh, really nice edits, but what I really want you to 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 think about here is look how amazing this experience is. You're actually watching someone edit a document in real time, and you're watching it on a tablet. Right? It's great. Um, why don't we move on? All right. So um, we've looked. Um, uh, we're going to go back to slides now. Uh, we've looked at the new Nexus 7 with Android 4.3. We've also checked out how the latest Google apps look like on this great new device. Now, there's a whole universe of amazing content out there in Google Play. And it really defines owning and using a Nexus 7 tablet. To tell you about this world of great content, uh, please welcome on stage Google Play product manager Ellie Powers. Thanks, Hugo. So as Sundar said earlier, we're starting to see on Android tablets what mirrors the kind of hockey stick growth that we saw in Android smartphones a couple of years back. Now, let's talk about the Android tablet ecosystem. It's come a long way, too. It's been spurred on by the launch of the original Nexus 7, and every app that you can think of is there. All the major brands and titles look beautiful on any size Android tablet. So Expedia, Evernote, the BBC, Pinterest, and Flipboard, they all look amazing on the new Nexus 7's beautiful display. Now we're also making it easier to discover great tablet apps on Google Play too. For example, now when you're browsing Google Play on a tablet, you can choose to see only apps that are designed for tablets in the top lists. We've also added over 50 collections that highlight outstanding apps on tablets, too. For example, here you can see Tablet 101 and Tablet Spotlight. Now, another area where we're seeing great tablet app growth is games. The games category is on fire, with 19 out of the top 20 game developers building Android tablet games and new titles launching immediately on Android. Now, at Google I.O. in May, we announced our new gaming platform for Android, iOS, and the web, Google Play Game Services. It has features like multiplayer, leaderboards, and more. And in just two months, already hundreds of games have already added Google Play Game Services, and we have millions of users playing. So now we want to turbocharge gaming on Android by bringing together your friends and your games via a new hub, a new app. It's called Google Play Games. Let's take a look. OK, so when we launch the new Google Play Games app, I can see my games and my friends. Those are the two most important things in gaming. And let's check out Triple Town, which I love. This is where you play this puzzle game to build cities. Let's check out how I'm doing here. We can see all the achievements that I've unlocked, as well as some of the ones that I haven't quite unlocked yet. Now, I actually live in an apartment in real life, so yesterday I decided to build a mansion, and I got an achievement for that. Now if we switch over to the leaderboards, we can see that there's a leaderboard for every different map in the game. And I love Boomtown, which is where you race to build the biggest city you can as fast as you can. I'm very happy to see you here that amongst my friends, I am still comfortably in first place. But if we swipe to the right, let's have a look at the public leaderboard here. It looks like things are just a little bit more competitive. I am sadly only in the top 37%, and I guess I'm going to have to live with that for now. <sighs> OK. Now, the best way to discover new games is to see what my friends are doing. So the new Google Play Games app lets you do that by using Google Plus Circles. 
My friend Kenny here, where is Kenny? There he is. He's a serious gamer. Now, I can see here that he's playing Riptide GP2. I heard this game came out yesterday, but I haven't tried it yet. But here directly from the Google Play Games app, I can go to the Google Play Store to get the app right away. And you can get the new Google Play Games app today on the Google Play Store. It also ships with a new Nexus 7 tablet. Now, before we see why Get Kenny has been playing Riptide GP2 absolutely nonstop since it shipped yesterday, let's talk about why the new Nexus 7 is the perfect gaming device. It's got a super high resolution display, stereo speakers with surround sound, screaming fast GPU and CPU, and OpenGL ES 3.0 support in Android 4.3. Now, many developers are already taking advantage of these capabilities, and we're going to take a peek now at a couple of new games. First, let's take a look at Kenny's favorite. This is Riptide GP2 from Vector Unit. Okay, Riptide GP2 builds on the original supercharged jet ski racing game with improved 3D graphics. They're rendered in native 1080p resolution here on the new Nexus 7 tablet. The water introduces a bunch of realistic detail. You can see splashes on the camera lens, the stunts have become more daring, and they're slicker, and there are more of them for you to master. The gameplay is super smooth and responsive. You can play in real time with your friends using Google Play game services. Ouch. You can also use Cloud Save to pause there and then pick up later from a different device. Riptide GP2 is available today on Google Play. Now next, let's have a look at a 21st century take on an early 90s classic, Prince of Persia 2. So in Ubisoft's fantastic new version, they've added touch and gesture controls and completely overhauled the combat system. You can see the stunning 3D visuals in native 1080p resolution, the buildings have exquisite detail, and the shadows even move in real time as the perspective changes. Okay, Jay, that's enough. We can stop right there. I'll catch up on your progress later in the Google Play Games app. Prince of Persia, The Shadow and the Flame, will be available tomorrow on Google Play. Finally, we have Asphalt 8, Airborne by Gameloft. It's the latest title in one of the most successful racing franchises of all time. First, we can see that these graphics are stunning, and they're even a major upgrade on Asphalt 7. It takes advantage of the OpenGL ES 3.0 technology to add detailed features. If you check out the road here, and even the dirt next to the road, you can see the level of detail that they're able to achieve. We have real-time reflections in the sky, and right now here it's a sunny day, but when the weather effects kick in, it looks even better. If Jay gets going particularly fast, we'll be able to see the motion blur, and your friends can play along. They can even share screenshots and video of the gameplay too. And you can see why this new edition is called Airborne. It lets you do all those crazy flips and spins that would get your driver's license revoked in real life. Asphalt 8 will be available on Google Play on August 8th. Prince of Persia, Riptide GP2, and Asphalt 8 are just three of the many upcoming games launches that are taking advantage of the new Nexus 7 capabilities. The awesome display, the stereo sound, and the fast performance. They all also use Google Play game services so that you can enjoy gaming with your friends through multiplayer and leaderboards. The new Nexus 7 is the ultimate gaming device, but there's more to it than that. It's actually also great for reading books because it's lightweight and it's got that super high resolution screen. And it's also very affordable, which makes it the ultimate device for students. Now, it's with students in mind that we're announcing a new content category on Google Play, textbooks. So instead of a 400 page doorstop, Google Play Books brings you awesome features like search, bookmarks, highlighting, notes, and even night mode so that you don't wake your roommate. You can access Google Play textbooks through the web or on your Android or iOS device. Your notes and bookmarks will be synced across all of them smoothly. At launch, we're going to have a comprehensive selection of higher education titles from all five major textbook publishers, as well as others, covering a wide range of subjects like science, math, law, and accounting. So you can buy textbooks, or better still, you can rent them for up to 80% off for six months. So if you're a student, for just the cost of one new Nexus 7, you could buy that and then rent all your textbooks instead. Textbooks will be available on Google Play in early August, giving you plenty of time to get ready for the new school year.
Back to Hugo and Nexus 7. All right. Uh, thanks, Ali. So uh, let's do a quick recap here um, of the, uh, the new Nexus 7. Uh, it's a significant upgrade to the original first generation Nexus 7. Thinner and lighter. Uh, it's much more comfortable to hold. Uh, it's got an incredibly high resolution display with more than double the number of pixels. Um, dual stereo speakers, plus we've added virtual surround sound. A CPU that's nearly twice as fast and a GPU that's four times as fast. Double the RAM, front and rear camera, and optional LTE uh, 4G connectivity completely unlocked. Uh, the new Nexus 7 will be av available in three different models, the 16 gigabyte Wi-Fi model, 32 gigabyte Wi-Fi, and a 32 gigabyte 4G LTE model for $229, $269, and $349. The 16 gigabyte and 32 gigabyte models will be on sale next Tuesday, July 30th, on Google Play, and in more retailers than ever before. Starting on Tuesday, um, you'll be able to buy the Wi-Fi models online and in stores for all of the, from all of these retailers uh, in the US. Uh, the 32 gigabyte 4G LTE model will support T-Mobile, AT&T, Verizon, and will be available in coming weeks. The new Nexus 7 will launch <clears throat> in Canada, the UK, Germany, Spain, France, Japan, Korea, and Australia, also in coming weeks, with more countries to follow very soon. OK. Now that you've seen all of the amazing features of this new device, which we're really thrilled about, uh, the extremely portable nature, uh, the super high resolution display, the highest in its category, virtual surround sound, a super fast processor, all the amazing experiences that you just saw. Um, but what's really important, of course, is how all of this power comes together every day to help us create, learn, and connect in thousands of very personal, different ways. So we're going to close this section today with a video that we've made that tells a little story about how Nexus 7 works, can work its way into someone's life. Let's roll the video. Google, what is glossophobia? Glossophobia, or speech anxiety, is the fear of public speaking. Thank you, Hugo and team. Uh, I've been living on my Nexus 7 for the past few weeks, and the screen really, really shines and uh, truly makes for a stunning experience. Uh, you can all check it out in the demo lounge upstairs. One of the things uh, the clips and the demo showed is how much people are using digital content on these tablets and the newer types of devices, especially online videos, which is the next trend we want to talk to you about. There is a huge growth in the number of online videos being consumed. Let's take a look at some stats. Every single month, there are over 200 billion videos, online videos, that are watched globally by users. And if you take a look at the top sites, sites like the top two sites, Netflix and YouTube, alone, just these two sites alone, account for almost half of peak downstream traffic 
internet traffic in North America. That's staggering. And what are users doing on smartphones and tablets? The number of online videos they are watching has increased by 2.7x just in the last year alone. So this is a pretty amazing trend, but it's mainly happening on people's computing devices, on phones, laptops, tablets. The television, an average household has three televisions in the US. But the television is missing in the picture. It is really, really difficult to get your online videos onto your television. The television is typically the best experience in the house. It's the most immersive experience in the house, connected to all your speakers, et cetera. But only 15% of households in a given week manage to figure out how to send an online video to their television. So we really want to make this better. And we have taken a solution based on Chrome. Because Chrome at its foundation, simplicity is at the foundation of Chrome, and it's really designed to work across screens. It runs on all operating systems and can help bridge together this experience and bring online videos to television as well. So to talk about how we are using Chrome to solve this problem, let me invite Mario Keros. Thank you, Sundar. Like Chrome, our design approach to bringing great uh, online entertainment to your TV is simplicity. One barrier to viewing online content on TV is getting your TVs connected in the first place. Our first design principle is to build a product with as close to zero setup time as possible. Now, once you're set up, you may not want to learn a different interface on your TV. Everyone loves their phones, tablets, and laptops. Why not, learn, why not just make them work with your TVs? Your personal device should be your remote. Third, we're designing to enable TV experiences across platforms and across devices. All of the Android phones and Android tablets, iPhones, iPads, Windows desktops, Mac and Chrome OS laptops should just work with your TV. Unlike other solutions, we will not force you to have the same operating system on all your devices. Today, we're going to show you how we can make this happen. It starts with a new device from Google. And I happen to have one right here in my pocket. Introducing Chromecast, the easiest way to bring your favorite online entertainment to your TV. You notice that Chromecast is small. It's just two inches in length. We were able to pack a lot of power in, into this tiny device because it's built on Chrome technology. It's running a simplified version of Chrome OS. Once you take it out of its beautiful clean box, all you have to do is plug it into uh, any HDMI input on your TV, power through USB, connect to your home Wi-Fi, and you're ready to kick back and watch. Chromecast won't clutter your entertainment cabinet. It simply disappears behind your TV. Let me tell you a little bit about how it works, and then we're going to go to a demo. Once, once Chromecast is plugged in, let's say that you want to watch YouTube on your TV. You just go to the same YouTube app that you're already familiar with on your phone, tablet, or laptop, and you will see the cast button in the UI. You simply press the cast button to play a video on your TV. Chromecast receives the command from the YouTube app, pulls the video you requested directly from the cloud, and plays it on your TV. What's unique about the solution is that we bring the highest resolution content directly from the cloud rather than relying just on your personal device to push the content. Meanwhile, back on the couch, you have full control over playback of the video from your phone, tablet, or laptop, whichever device you were using your, your YouTube app on. Now, let's see Chromecast in action. I'd like to invite Rishi and AK to demo for us. OK, thank you, Mario. 
So AK and I are really excited to show you Chromecast in action. So for today's demo, we've gone ahead and brought a variety of different devices you'll find in a typical living room, including phones, tablets, and laptops. And over here, we've plugged in a Chromecast into a standard HD TV. The TV is off for now. Now we're going to show you how these devices can control this TV using Chromecast. And for those in the room, we're going to be uh, placing the TV feed on the outside monitors and the devices on the inside monitors. All right, so let's get started. So let's say I'm in my living room and I'm hanging out with my friends. I want to show them one of my favorite YouTube videos. Well, I could do it on a small little phone, but it's much better to do it on this big, beautiful screen. So let's show you how we'll do it. So let's go ahead and bring up my Nexus 4. And I'm going to open up the YouTube app. Now, this is the YouTube app I use every day. So it's, I'm already logged in, has access to my favorites, my channels, my subscriptions. So AK is going to go and pick one of my favorite music videos. Now, this is pretty standard YouTube thus far. What you can see in the top of the YouTube app is the new cast button that Mario just mentioned. Simply press it, and it allows you to send that YouTube video to different devices. In this case, we're going to pick Living Room, which is the name of the Chromecast I connected to this TV. So now let's take a look at the TV. Because what's happening here is actually pretty subtle, but really cool. Chromecast is turning on my TV, switching it to the right input, and now playing YouTube in HD on the TV. That's it. Just a simple press of a button. YouTube automatically detected my Chromecast device on my home network, so I don't have to do any additional configuration or setup. So now we can show you how easy it is to control that YouTube video from your phone. So I can do simple things like pause the video or continue to play it. We can also do more interesting things, like change the volume. So let's go ahead and bring the sound back to full volume. AK is using the volume keys of the phone to change the volume of the video playing on the TV. It's pretty cool. Now, the best part of YouTube is being inspired to find other fun videos to watch. So let's say one of my friends remembers a cool video she just saw about Lindsay Sterling. Well, I can go to my phone and do a search. Notice I'm doing the search without disrupting what's actually happening on the TV. Once we pick a video, we can either play it now, but all my friends are still watching this, this great video. So instead, we're going to go ahead and add it to a TV queue, where we'll continue to play after this video is done. And pretty quickly, we can add a few videos to the TV queue. And just like that, I've created a playlist with my friends. Now, just step back for a second and think about all the interactions we just did. Now, imagine trying to do them with a traditional remote control. Now you'll never have to. You can do everything with your phone. And the great thing is I didn't have to learn anything new. If you know how to use YouTube on your phone, you know how to use YouTube on your TV. Now, I still need to be able to use my phone for other things. So let's say, for example, I'm waiting for an email from a friend of mine who hasn't come to the party yet. So I'll go ahead and go to my uh, phone, leave the YouTube app, and open up Gmail. I can read my email while my friends are still watching YouTube on the big screen. And that's really key and what makes our model unique. Because we're streaming from the cloud, Chromecast is talking directly to YouTube, which means my phone is go free to go and access all my favorite applications, which is exactly what I'd want. So most of the time, I'm probably going to put my phone down, kick back, and watch some TV with some friends. Even in sleep mode, the video is continuing to play. We don't drain your battery. But importantly, I'm still in control. So I can simply wake up my phone. Without even unlocking it, I can pause the video or skip to the next video in the queue. It's pretty simple. By using my phone, YouTube on TV becomes familiar, simple, and intuitive. Now, we recognize that not everyone's going to have an Android phone. Right. In reality, most households today already have a mix of Android devices and iOS devices. And we need a solution that's going to work for everyone. And that means for every device. So let's say, for example, let's go ahead and pretend that my wife has an iPhone. 
And in this case, I'm going to bring up her iPhone. And again, we're going to open up the YouTube app. Because she's logged into her phone, we, she has immediate access to her favorites. And like you just saw on Android, simply press the cast button, send it to living room, and now she's watching her favorite video on the television. It just automatically works, whether it's an iOS device or an Android device. In fact, now, I can invite all my friends to connect to my home network, and they can all start sending their favorite videos to the TV. Or we can even build a shared queue. It's also really easy to get the video back to the phone. Simply press the cast button, select phone, and that will continue playing exactly where you had left off. So we just showed you how really simple it is to use Chromecast with YouTube. Just a simple press of a button, you can multitask on your device while still playing the video on the TV, and it works across platforms. So now we want to take that exact same experience and bring it to other types of content. So let's go back to my wife's iPhone. And this time, we're going to open up Netflix. You're going to see Netflix immediately detected my Chromecast device on my home network. Simply press the cast button, select your device, and now my wife is ready to start watching movies and TV shows from Netflix right on the big screen. All she needs to do is press play. So in this case, she's uh, gone ahead and picked House of Cards, one of our favorite shows. So let's go ahead and take a look. It's playing in beautiful 1080p HD with support for 5.1 surround sound. It looks great. So now let's say my wife has to leave the room or leave the house, and I still want to watch the video. Well, we have one small problem. She took the phone with her, so now it's gone. So what do I do? How do I control the video? Well, the answer is pretty simple. I'm going to go ahead and pick up my new Nexus 7. So let's bring up my Nexus 7, and I'm going to open the Netflix app. Netflix immediately detects what's already playing on the television. Simply press the blue bar. And now I have full control of the video from a completely different device. You're not tied to any specific device. In fact, any device in your home can become a remote control for the television. What's also really cool is that actually these devices are actually synchronized. So let me show you a little demo to, to showcase that. So we're going to go ahead and bring back my wife's iPhone on the other monitor. And the videos continue to play here temporarily. So AK is going to go ahead and skip forward on the Nexus 7 farther down in the episode. And before he does, take a look at the iPhone and the scrubber. And AK, why don't you go ahead and skip forward. The iPhone immediately syncs to the exact same place. In fact, now my wife can pause on her iPhone. And I can start playing on my tablet. Remember, this is an iOS device and an Android device. They're actually working together. OK, so we showed you how easy it is to watch Netflix on Chromecast. Well, it's just as easy to, to watch Google Play Movies and TV. So let's go ahead and open up the Play Movies app. I already have my Nexus 7 up. Again, simply press the Cast button, select your device, and now you're ready to watch. Now, with play, uh, Google Play Movies and TV, I can rent or subscribe uh, any, any movie or a TV show. But in this case, we're going to go ahead and continue playing something we've already purchased fast forward. Again, it looks great. The model is really simple. Simply press the cast button. And now you're watching your movies, your TV shows, your YouTube videos all on the big screen. Now, the great thing is the model is not just limited to video. It also works great for things like music. We all listen to our phone, uh, music on our phones and our tablets. When we get home, we want to listen to it on the best speakers in the house. For many of us, the best speakers are connected to the TV. With Chromecast, it's really easy 
to get your music on the television. So let me show you. We're going to bring up the Google Play Music app. This is going to be familiar. Press the cast button, select your device, and now go ahead and play any song in your library. And you're going to be listening to Google Music on the best speakers in your house. Let me show you one more example from my other favorite music app, Pandora. On my phone, I've already configured all my stations. I just want a really simple way to get it on my TV. Well, great. Go to the Pandora app, press the cast button, and now you're listening to Pandora on your television. I think this is AK's favorite station, not my favorite station, but regardless. But that's music. It's really simple and really easy. So one device we haven't yet talked about is the laptop. So now let's talk about it. Let's go ahead and bring up a laptop. And we've uh, already opened up the Chrome browser. And we're going to open up YouTube.com. The same cast button is going to show up. This time it's in the lower right corner next to YouTube's other player options. Simply press the cast button. And from your laptop now, you have sent a YouTube video directly to your TV. worked really hard to make sure you have a consistent user experience, regardless of whether you're coming from a phone, a tablet, or a laptop. It just works. OK, so we showed you some of the great apps, the great video apps and the great music apps that you can get with Chromecast. We recognize there's other content out there on the web today. So we have one more thing to show you, which helps get you that other content. Now, it's still early days, so this specific feature is in beta. We're announcing a new feature that allows you to project any Chrome tab directly to the TV. So let me show it to you. Now, this works beautifully for things like photos. So if we can bring back the, uh, the Chrome browser on the laptop. There we go. Um, so it's really easy. So on the photos, I've opened up a Google Plus photo album. And on the top right, you're going to see the cast button. Simply press it. And now we're going to be projecting what's on your local device directly on the television. No wires, no cables. And we've made some smart optimizations. For example, you can notice we're not actually projecting your entire desktop or even the URL bar. We're focusing on the content you care about, which is the content you actually want to watch on your television. Now let's simply go to uh, slideshow mode. And now you're watching your photos on the best screen in the house. Let me give you one more example. This time, we're going to open a web video from one of our favorite video sites. Again, just start playing it locally on your laptop. It'll project it to the television. You can even go full screen. We've also designed this in a way that you can continue using your laptop even while you're projecting your current tab. You can simply go back to Chrome, open a new tab, and while you're watching your video on the television, you can continue to access the entire web. Now, you don't need any specialized hardware to make this work. In fact, for today's demo, we're using a standard $500 Windows 8 laptop. It'll work with most Windows laptops, most Mac laptops, and Chrome OS through the Chromebook Pixel. We're launching this feature as beta so we can get all your feedback and continue to iterate and improve on it as you've come to expect with Chrome. OK, with that, I'd like to give it back to Mario Queros. Thanks, guys. I've been uh, testing Chromecast for several months from the very first prototype. And I still love to kick back and watch, and watch the demo. It's very cool and very exciting. I want to give a shout out to the different Google product teams and to Netflix, uh, whose apps you saw in the demo just now, whom we've been working with for a few months to bring these consumer experiences to TV. We're paving the way for many apps to come, many more apps to come. So I'm going to shift gears 
and talk about developers for a few minutes. If you're a developer, you might be asking, how can you get your app uh, to cast content to a TV in the same way that you just saw done just now in the, in the demos? Apps like YouTube and Google Play are doing this through the Google Cast SDK, a technology for developers to bring content from mobile and web apps to TVs. Enabling apps to work with the Google Cast SDK is very simple. Developers don't need to build a new app. All it takes is a few modifications to existing mobile and web apps. Today, we're publishing a developer preview of the Google Cast SDK with libraries for Android, iOS, and Chrome. We've invited a number of developers here today to showcase the apps that they're in the process of building with the, the Google Cast SDK. Our goal is to partner to create an ecosystem of apps as well as devices. With the, with the Chromecast device, while the Chromecast device is the first instantiation of Google Cast, over time, we expect the technology to be embedded into a range of devices from our partners. So recapping, your Chromecast device gets you access to great content from YouTube, Netflix, Google Play Movies and TV, Play Music, lots of content from the web through Chrome Tab Projection, and still to come, Pandora and many more apps. With a simple press of the cast button, you're watching on your TV while still having full control over your device. Unlike other solutions, it works with Android, iOS, Chrome for Windows, Chrome for Mac, and Chromebook Pixel. So we've talked a lot about the product this morning, and we're really excited about it. But you're probably wondering, how much does it cost, and how can I get it? Our engineers have worked really, really hard to make Chromecast as affordable as possible for as many consumers as possible. So we're happy to announce that Chromecast will retail for $35. For $35, it's affordable enough to connect up every TV in your home. The Chromecast device is available for purchase in the US later today with expansion to other countries as quickly as possible. You can order Chromecast starting this afternoon from Amazon.com, Best Buy.com, and Google Play. It will also be available from Best Buy stores uh, across the US as early as July 28th. And through our partnership with Netflix, for a limited time, you will also get three months free of Netflix with the purchase of a Chromecast device. We're going to close this morning with a video that really shows some of the experiences that we're aspiring to enable through Chromecast. Mm -hmm. Thank <laughs> you.